Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. And uh, we're with John Coleman, my partner, and the, uh, and the amazing, the virtually amazing John Mariani of East Coast fame and worldwide fame, actually. There you go. Yeah. Gosh. John Mariani, <laughs> the virtual gourmet. I leave my silver bullet in every hotel room in the world. <laughs> hey, John, um, I, you are a world traveler, literally, uh, as our food and travel expert on Celebrating Act Two. Um, of course, travel has been, um, what, changed and uh, eliminated in some cases because of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. But um, the situation is a little bit different in Europe. You've kept in touch with your friends there. Tell us about... Uh, you know, Europe, France, Italy, the nearby Europe that I think of, as opposed to the further stretches of uh, the European boundaries. Uh, what are they doing that's different? And, and are, they, uh, are they missing the tourists? Uh, the answer to the second question is, you bet they are. The answer to the first question is that they did everything right pretty much from the start of this pandemic. Back in February and March, they shut it down. Uh, Italy was completely shut, shut down. My friends there said, yes, except to go out for groceries. We are shut down in our houses for weeks and weeks. Um, police would stop them on the streets. It's easy to do. There's nobody on the streets, okay? So one guy shows up walking down the street. They stopped and said, where are you going? He says, I'm going to my bank right over there. All right, you got five minutes because there's nobody else in the bank. They did it right, and they really brought it down, way down. And this goes for France, which was completely sh shut down. And this goes for England and Germany. And um, some, uh, I think it was uh, Sweden did not, and they had a big spike. But they really did it right. And um, as has, I live in New York, outside of New York City. And New York, you know, we had one death this week. One. Nobody else in the United States can say that. I think maybe New Jersey is, is pretty close because we did shut it down. Now it's slowly reopening. So the rest of the country has to learn how to do that. Anyway, back to um, uh, Europe. So everything is now reopened. Um, social distancing, masks, um, cutting down the number of, of people. Like if a hotel, let's say it has 200 rooms, they will open 75 or 80 rooms. Um, not least because, and this is a, the important uh, aspect of what we're talking about, Americans can't go unless you want to quarantine yourself for 14 days. Now, if you want to visit your Aunt uh, Tomoza in Sicily, she'll put you up for 14 days and you'll gain 14 pounds. But generally speaking, if you want to go to Paris and visit the Louvre and uh, eat at the bistros, you got 14 days of quarantine uh, ahead of you before you can step out of the house. Okay, In a so, hotel somewhere. Well, you can do it in a hotel, um, but you cannot go into the public rooms of the hotel. Wow. You will be in your room for 14 days. Okay, so here you are at the Plaza Athene, 900 bucks a room <laughs> for 14 days ordering room service, which is a knock at the door. They put it down in front of you like John Gotti used to eat in prison. Um, so one place, one of my favorite places uh, in all of Italy on uh, Lake Como is the Hotel La Gran Tremezzo. It's very, very beautiful. And it only has uh, less than 150 rooms or something like that. And um, they were shut down completely. And now they have reopened. They have something like a percentage of their rooms open. Um, and 43% of their customers used to be Americans. 43%. Now, I guarantee you that in all of the most expensive hotels in London, in Paris, in Rome, um, every, in Amsterdam, those were filled by either American tourists to a high percentage, at least a minimum of 25%, of uh, the hotels in any of those uh, cities I just named would be Americans on any given year. But then you have to subtract all of the American businessmen who fly over for maybe two or three days to do business or even one day and have the conference room, which costs $10,000 to rent, and they have the big banquets downstairs uh, for their staff and so forth, all of the wines. That's all gone. 
So um, just as uh, New York is struggling to survive still with many, many restrictions, Europe is hurting very, very badly solely because of the Americans. Uh, but it's their choice. You know, they've banned us. And it's not like they don't want us. It's um, uh, because we're Muslims or some idiotic idea. It's because uh, they don't want to get the virus from we are kind of Americans who like to get on a uh, 747 uh, uh, and not wear a mask. And I mean, it's just preposterous. Actually, it's the same thing is true in uh, I have friends in Australia and uh, they have the same phenomenon. They, they lock down. And if you go there, even if you are an Australian, and you go to some foreign travel, uh, when you come back, you, they whisk you to a hotel room automatically, 14 mm. days, and they uh, send somebody in in a hazmat suit every day to check you. You literally cannot leave the room. And um, they have it fairly well under control. And every time something comes up again, which is not so true in Europe, uh, from what I've been watching recently, uh, when they have, let's say, an outbreak of five or six people, they shut down whole areas of uh, the country again because they really want to keep on top of it until they have a vaccine. Are you finding the same is true in uh, in uh, Europe? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, if it breaks out again, if there is a spike, um, they will shut down that particular region, let's say the Lake Como region or something. Um, but uh, the, the cities are, the, of course, the worst in places. But again, if you're keeping people out, of a city who might have it, um, you've got a pretty good chance. And if all of your citizens are wearing masks and keeping social, if they're obeying the current rules, they should be okay. They're just not sleeping in the beds at the Hassler in Rome or the Plaza Athene in uh, in Paris or the Dorchester in um, in London. And that, that also, I mean, it's not that, that uh, I don't even know if the French and the English and the Italians and the Germans, if they are banning people from China and Japan, I suspect they are. So that business is gone too. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, the pandemic affects everybody and it's a, you know, once in a century experience, I guess we have to deal with in a unique way. Well, let's hope so because remember in the not too distant past, we still got Zika virus in the Caribbean, and we had um, Ebola, e and uh, and others. So uh, scientists have warned us about this for decades that it could we could have a pandemic. We could these superbugs, you know, can't yeah. kill them. Well, well that happens for the. Go ahead, Art. On that happy thought. Uh, yes, I was going to say on that on that happy thought. Thanks for the perspective uh, on Europe. It's a good to know. Of course, I'm not getting on a plane anytime soon, anyway. But um, it's nice to know what's happening around the world. You know, Appreciate it. and as I as I said in the past, historically, we've been through two world wars and a lot of other wars in which cities have been devastated, absolutely devastated. And they spring back, they come back, and people go to Berlin and, and see a modern city, and they go to uh, <coughs> Ho Chi Minh City. They see a, you know, it's you can't stop humanity from having a good time. Well, thank God for that. And we'll sure, nice learn more this <laughs> week from the virtual gourmet newsletter. Yes, and where can people do that while they're not planning their overseas travel? Oh, that's the nice thing about the internet, isn't it? You can read the letter on Mariani.com anywhere in the world. JohnMariani.com. Got it. The virtual gourmet. Well, the John, thank you. We'll see you soon. Thank yeah. you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.